it's Chad. I'm here with Brittany, my daughter, and today we're going to put new tires on the on the bike. So stick around. Hi, Britt. <laughs> okay, my bike is the low slung bike and I don't have a center stand, so I use a pit bull to do that. But there's a trick to it and I learned the hard way. The last time I put tires on, it slid up the swing arm, bike fell over, it was a mess. So we'll get it set up here. Here, we go. hold that. If, if you look right here, this side of the swing arm slopes up. And then on the other side, it's, it's more level. So when you have the, the pit bull under it, any wiggling of the bike causes that side to slide up and then the bike falls over. So you have to sort of cock the pit bull sideways to, to make it stay up. Next thing I'll do is lock the front brake down. That way when the back wheel's off the ground, the bike won't roll. Okay, I can get the axle out and it's not on the steepest part of that slope, but if you look how I had to cock it sideways to make that happen, you can't put it in straight. All right, all right, I'm not going to really go into detail about how to uh, remove the tire. It's pretty self-explanatory, so, uh, but pretty much just loosen your chain tensioners, back them off. You're going to take off the axle nut on the other side and pull the axle out. So. Okay, before we break this tire down, we're going to clean it a little bit. Normally I clean the rim and everything, but right now I'm just going to clean the sides where the tire is going to set and put new ones on it. Uh, so, be right back. Hey, Britt. <laughs> All right, we, we just cleaned around the rims where the tire is going to mount. Uh, the back needs a full cleaning. But what I usually do, will you hold this? Is I just remove all of this. Because it gives it a flatter surface to set when I flip the tire over. But <clears throat> that's it. So now we're gonna take the valve core out and break the tire down. Stand by. This is a Bead Pro by uh, Motion Pro. And it's a real time saver. It doesn't break it down as quick as what you they make it you out to be, but uh, it does pretty good. It beats the other way of trying to break your bead. <clears throat> you pretty much just have to go around the tire several times. Thank you. 
There it went. Oh. Woo. Boom. Now for the other side. And this isn't sweat, this is just enthusiasm. <laughs> the other side usually isn't as hard, but it's going to make a fool out of me this time, I bet. All right, this side too. Maybe going around it three quarters of the way before it pop. Now, here's another little trick I use. What I normally have is like pieces cut out of a, an old jug or something like that of plastic to keep you from bend, from scuffing your rim as you, as you break your tire down. So I went to Walmart and bought 30 cent plastic binders. So. So much for that. <laughs> It's all over but the crying now. Got her whisk. And that was that. Sometimes you can get the rim and it just falls out. You know, I, I don't know if it's because of binding or what, but other times you gotta pry on it a little bit. That's it. Okay, I found out that wheel weights were a pain in the butt. Uh, you can get some tires, it'll, you only take two or three weights, other tires will take six weights. So I found right on tire sealant and balancer works wonders. I've never had a problem with it. I've used it on probably my last five or six sets of tires. So that's what we'll go back with. Uh, anyway, for now, I'm gonna clean this rim up a little bit before we get ready to mount the other tire. And we'll go from there. Uh, so, see in a few. I'm gonna talk tires for just a minute. I got a little over 26,000 miles on my bike and I think I've gone through the original crew threes that came on the bike they lasted about 3,000 miles then I went with my favorite tire of all time the TKC 80s uh, to me that's the best tire on the market but again you only get 3,000 miles out of them if you're lucky <clears throat> so the last two sets of tires I've used were the Mitas EO7 plus and they're they're not as confidence inspiring as the TKC 80s on or off road. Uh, it's like it's a harder compound. You, you get more slide on the pavement. Uh, but I did get over, over 5,000 miles out of both sets. Uh, these are plumb gone. You know, I rode from the east coast back to I rode from here to the east coast, all up and down. Uh, I probably got just over 5,000 miles on them, and they're shot. So I'm going to try a new one. Uh, I've heard people call them Moto Z, Motos, whatever, but these are the, the Motos GPS. Uh, this, they're tires from Australia. Supposedly, you get 
way better mileage and it's more of a rubber compound than a plasticky compound for better grip on road. Obviously I don't have the off-road knobbies like I like, but to be honest, the since I left three months ago, uh, I've been on way more pavement than dirt. So I'm gonna give these a shot and see how it goes. The thing about these tires is in, you can mount them in either direction. One direction is a 50-50 tire, and if you mount them the other direction, it's more off-road oriented, probably 70-30, 60-40. So I'm gonna go 50-50 and give them a try. Hopefully I get a little better. I'm pretty prepping the tire. <laughs> Uh. All right, I worked up a little sweat. It's like 55 degrees, so I had to get some water. <laughs> but people use different things. I've heard of Armor All, all these different kind of lubricants, but the best thing you can use is just soapy water. So I spray it down really good. The tire, we're going to go 50-50, so it's going to go that direction. The, it'll be just like it is. Loop it down. Double check. Okay, it's a good thing I double checked because it's backwards. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Now, when you put the tire on, it helps to get as much on there as you can. Well, shit. I mean, dang. <laughs> Break. <laughs> Beep. We'll burp that out. <clears throat> These are stiffer sidewall. I didn't expect that to be gone so easy. Is this the right tire? 150, 70, 17? Yeah, it's the right tire. So, hey. Win win, huh? So now we'll lube this side. You can never have too much lube. And then we just start spooning it on. I found a trick on this is don't get too anxious and take too big a bites. It'd been easier if I used another spoon. But I do this until I see it starting to pull out from the other side. Like, right, probably this bite, this side will come out. Yeah, see? So once it does that, then I come back and I do opposite sides. One, one. These are stiff, it's actually hurting my knee. Set, set. Okay, normally I have a tool that, pull, that, that holds this down into the, the, the dead center of the rim. Like right now it's sitting up here on the bead, so it's, I can't pull that and stretch that. So I'm going to take this tool and put in there and, and push it down to where it's holding the tire down. And that's going to make it go on easier. Like the TKC-80s are so soft, you can take your knees and push them down into the middle of the tire. This one's not like that. It's actually sort of a pain in the butt right now. I think these are a little stiffer than those Mitos tires. Goodbye. 
all right like right now I'm having to force it so hard that I know I'm doing it wrong and you can see the tires up against the, the outside of the rim as long as it's doing that you're not going to stretch this over top of that I got to get this mashed down to at least the, the drop center of the, the rim somehow but daggone these are stiff There it went. You just got to improvise. I mean, you do what you got to do to get it down in that drop center to free it up. Oh, crap. This is where if you had like four hands. You'd be well off. It's killing my knees. <laughs> oh. Get it down in the center. You want me to help hold that down over there? I can film from over there. If you want, you can come over here and stand on this. Right. Okay. And uh, having a daughter help you really helps. <laughs> All right, right there. Is there any more that's going to fall out? This is definitely tighter than that V toss. Push it down in the center. Come on. All right. Should pop on. Okay. Now the, the scary part, we're going to seat the bead. Uh, don't put your fingers in here. Don't have anything around the tire and the edge of the rim or you're going to lose it. I leave the valve core out to get a big, quick rush of air. I don't like standing beside, behind the tire. I've seen truck tires blow out. Here we go. popped out really easy uh, to seat the bead. So, man, this tire is stiffer than what I thought it would be. So for now, my hands are too soapy to pick it up. I'm going to put the valve cord back in it. <coughs> what, uh, what, I, what I'm going to do is put that uh, uh, right on tire sealing in there, but I'm not going to do that until I get the front tire changed that way As soon as I put it in there, I can ride it and spread it around So for now, I'm just going to put the valve core in it air it up a little bit mount it back on the bike and Do the front tire and then I'll do the sealant uh, But before I mount the tire if you look at my chain, it's been through Hades and back Let me get over here That's where, yeah, it's still a little stiff, but I've ridden through snow, rain, dirt, sand, everything. I've cleaned it several times along the way, but while I got the tire off, I got good access to it. I'm going to rig something up here and give the chain a good cleaning before we mount the tire back. So, catch you in a little bit. All right, I got the chain cleaned, lubed. Uh, it's so much easier when the rear wheel's off. But uh, what I normally do is I have a, a pan and I, I fill fill it with solution. And what I use is Simple Green. Uh, it, it works great. I, I think it's the best cleaner I've seen, actually. So <clears throat> I, I leave it laying in a pan of Simple Green and just keep brushing it 
you know, cleaning it. And it does pretty good. Uh, I always used uh, Maxima Chain Wax. There's no no reason behind it. Everybody has their favorites. It's just, this has always worked for me, so that's what I use. So, got that done. So now it's time to uh, put the wheel on. But, here's something that I found. Like I told you, these wheels on this F850 is the most tedious ones to mount by yourself that I've had on any bike. So, what I'm going to do is... I think it's the tolerances are so tight on that swing arm, but I'm going to clean the damper really good and um, and clean that really good and it lets it compress down a little bit and even even just a fraction of an inch gives you a little more wiggle room. So that's what I'm going to do now. And uh, I lost my partner. She went to pick up her her guy from work. So by the time I get this clean, she'll be back and she can help me. So later. It's still not back yet, so I'm gonna get started with it anyway. Um, like I told you, this thing, the the tolerances in it is so tight or it, it's so finicky, it drives you insane. The thing that really happens a lot is you'll knock this bushing out. Oh, and by the way, we went back and forth at, at a BMW dealership of which way this actually goes. One guy was saying it goes this way. The other guy said it goes that way. I know for a fact when I got it from the factory, I changed the first set of tires on it, and it was like this. And they, I can hear it hitting inside. If you turn it over, then it fills in behind that seal, and I don't know if it would pop it out or what, but I know this is how it was from the factory. So that's the way I, I've been putting it back, and I've had no issues with it. Uh, the other side, the seal here, just be careful not to knock it out. Now the trick, I'm going to have to grease off my hands. The trick is, uh, I came up with this solution. I use a ratchet strap and I'll raise the tire up to where I can handle it by myself and guide it into the brake disc and it's, sort of, it's like having a, an extra hand to move it around. So, I'll give that a try. And show you how it goes. All I done was I, this this seal fell out twice. This seal fell out once. There's a spacer. I just put them back in and kept cranking it up slowly with the ratchet strap. It's it's like having an extra hand. It's like having an extra helper. This this is really really a good technique to use if you're by yourself. It frees you up. You don't have to sit there and hold it and try to wiggle, get the axle in. It's just, it, it works. So I'm gonna keep moving it up until I can get the axle in and then I'll start on the front tire. So, all right, I'll keep working at it. All right, before I keep jacking it up and getting it in perfect alignment, this is a th something you don't wanna forget is the chain tensioners. I've done that before. I've got the tire on and got it lined up and realized, oh crap, you know, I was sticking the axle in without the tensioners. So, just go ahead and put them back in on both sides. Backwards, like a dummy. All right, now we're just gonna line it up, put the axle in it. All right, <clears throat> something else that I do is I, I put uh, anti-seize on the axle going in, but I'm, I'm pretty close to getting it lined up. Now you wanna make sure that this is lined up with the, the catch there for when you tighten up the axle nut. Uh, but, wow, I'm surprised. I didn't think I had it that close. Let's see. I'm gonna have to drop it down just a little. Nope. Look at that. This is the easiest I've done this job. Whoa. All right. 
then it's just reverse order tightening up the axle it's uh, I believe it's a hundred newton meters I'll double check it before I tighten it uh, mount the chain set the tension on the chain and the rear will be done so, all right shutting it off and I'm gonna finish this thing up see you in a little bit okay well this is the next day um, I tried to put the video together last night and this is too long I think this one's like 25 minutes or so so I'll, I'll do the videos of the tire change in two parts uh, make a separate video for the front tire but anyway at least it's done and ready to roll so like and subscribe and uh, watch for the next one I'll post it right after all right later